Welcome back to Breakfast. The government's controversial state asset sales programme will today be debated in Parliament, bringing the sale of entities like power companies one step closer. With that, there are concerns power prices could rise. The Greens have criticised the government for failing to front up with the figures. Sarah Free from Domestic Energy Users Network is with me now. Good morning. Good morning, Petra. Thanks is it your, for the opportunity. It's a pleasure. Is it your opinion that power prices will go up as a result of asset sales? Yes, I think that's definitely true. Um, what we have seen so far is that the government-owned companies are in fact cheaper than all the private companies, um, up to 3.3 per cent on average uh, cents per kilowatt hour on average cheaper, which equates to about um, $275 for a um, a year for a family. So let's, let's look at that because the National came out with a figure saying that there were f 21 regions in terms of power, 14 uh, in 14 areas privately owned power companies were the cheapest. Do you dispute those figures? Well it may, might be true that in some areas a, a private power company might be cheaper for a particular customer in their circumstances but what we're talking about is on average this is going to affect all New Zealanders so it's only fair to look at the average figures and the Ministry of Economic Development data clearly shows that on average the private companies are charging more than the three government owned companies. Okay so is the government doing enough? They're saying they've made law changes earlier this year, the regulatory environment has been changed to increase competition between companies. It is true that more people are switching power companies and that can result in an advantage for a while. But what we need to look at is the long term. How long will that last? It's all very well to switch power companies once. That can give you a benefit for a while. But what we're looking at is what's happening in the electricity industry in the long term and what, how that's actually going to impact on power prices. And what's happening is there's a lot of investment going on and private companies rightly, rightly demand a return on that investment. But what we have to ask is whether that investment is appropriate and whether that's really in the best interest particularly of households because it's, it's, it's giving us a more reliable energy supply but that reliability is coming at a big cost to, to households. They're having to fund that development and what we've seen is power prices have risen and they've risen and they've risen and we have um, Dennis Barnes, the CEO of Contact Energy, saying that we're all going to have to pay more in the future for extra energy developments um, so we, and, and in fact that's going to cost households dearly in the long term. So we know that the stress of power is, is immense, the power price is going up over the last 10 years, 50% they've risen and, and obviously mm. people can't live without power these days. Do you think that, that the sale of these four power companies, partial privatisation, will directly impact the price of power and, and in a significant way? Yes, I think they will, because um, the government companies at the moment are in the market and they have responsibilities to act. They have some social responsibilities under the SOE Act. That's going to be removed once they're private companies. Um, we, we have seen that the government companies are charging less. They're, they're in the market and they're acting as a break on the prices that otherwise private companies would probably like to charge. They'd right. probably like to charge more. All right, Sarah Free, Domestic Energy Users Network, thanks for joining the discussion on breakfast this morning. There's more to come on that, I feel. Yes, I'm sure, sure. they'd like to charge more.